Okay. Hey everyone, my name is Michael Frank and uh, welcome to the first live uh, prefab meetup. Thanks for hanging with us um, and uh, the fact that uh, our team here screwed up the uh, link invite. Hopefully that's the only thing we mess up tonight. But uh, we're really glad you joined us. Um, we have two amazing speakers tonight. We have the people from Proto Homes and the people from Clever Homes, both uh, here to tell you a bit about their company and answer questions you all have. Um, my name is Michael Frank. I'm the founder of a company called Prefab Review. Um, some of you may be very experienced at the prefab and modular building thing. Uh, a few years ago, I had some experience as a real estate investor, but none with this space. Um, and it's been a very educational ride. But uh, I think there's some really amazing things about the industry, particularly if you happen to live in an area that is as expensive as the Bay Area or Southern California. So um, we're really excited you joined us. Uh, the way this is going to work is we're going to do a quick Q&A um, with the founders from Proto here. Um, going to kind of uh, do my best to represent you all and uh, you know the hundreds of thousands of people I sort of interact with on a monthly basis via um, our website, prefabreview.com. And then we're going to um, get a small quick presentation from Proto Homes where they're going to uh, run us through the process of actually what it's like to work with them. And then we're going to hopefully have like 10 minutes for you to ask all your questions. And don't worry about any questions being too dumb or not dumb enough. Uh, I mean, not smart enough because uh, that's sort of part of this. And again, I've done a lot of these projects at this point and I learn new things every day about permitting and HOAs and all sorts of silly stuff. So uh, with that being said, um, I want to uh, introduce the guys from uh, Proto. So uh, we have two people here. Um, I don't know them very well. So uh, we uh, hopefully I don't butcher their names. Um, we have Frank Faffy, who is the CEO and chairman of Proto and uh, Zach Tolring, who is the director of business development. Um, how's it going guys? It's going well, thanks for having us. Cool. Thanks for you having guys us. are based in Southern California? We're in downtown Los Angeles. So if you know the downtown area, we are right next to the convention center. Great. Um, and I got, I got, someone got a, nice. I got a cheer. Cool. <laughs> um, and once again, as you have questions that come up, uh, ask them in the chat, but we'll, uh, and we'll uh, ask them towards the end. So hopefully that'll work. Uh, all right. With that being said, um, can you guys start by just telling me a little bit about kind of what makes, what makes you, you? There's obviously, as you can see in our site, hundreds and hundreds of companies that do some variation of sort of not 100% site built construction and design. Um, where, where did you sort of see an opportunity in the market or a sort of a place to do things better? So I'll, I'll start and I'll let Frank chime in as well, but we're pretty unique in the space in that we aren't technically modular, we, we fall under the prefab umbrella, but our system and what we call system built is really component driven. And so we do panelization for framing, we do um, systems for the foundation. We also do um, uh, components for your infrastructure, so your electrical, plumbing, HVAC systems, everything like that. So our technology is pretty unique and it's not just the physical components that go to the job site, but there's an interconnected network of databases. We have a proto app, which I can go through a little bit that ties the builders that we work with to our system so they can directly uh, communicate with us and bring up issues. And it gives the homeowner that's looking for that final product um, insight into how the home is being built along the way, gives them access to the permit documents, all designs, things like that. So it's really a comprehensive system that is foundation all the way to the exterior cladding and finish of the home um, while still allowing flexibility. So we end up in this hybrid space where we have some of the flexibility you see with a traditional home builder, sort of a custom home builder that will you know, do whatever you want, total flexibility, but really it's kind of a chaotic environment. And then we take some of that predictability from the modular and factory mentality and mix that in. So you get predictability and flexibility. Got it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so how did, uh, what, what, what's your backgrounds? How did, how did this, uh, how do you see this opportunity? Well, my background is in architecture and construction. And uh, so I started Proto Homes back about almost 10 years ago. And this is right, right after the, you know, the big crash. 
And before that, I used to develop, you know, big fancy homes on the west side in Brentwood Park, Palisades, and Rivieras. And we used to build the biggest homes, and we used to sell them for anywhere between seven, ten million to about fifteen, twenty million. And these are products that were sold thousand dollar per square foot back in time, any day of the week, any day of the week. But at the same time, I used to do small developments in Westside proper and also in Culver City, but we would never make money. We would make these 2,000, 3,000 square feet homes and we'll spend almost the same amount of time, almost about a year or so. And at the end of the day, we'll make maybe about 40,000, 20,000, but we made a killing on these bigger homes in the better neighborhood. And we could never figure out why is that, that we make so much money on these bigger projects that we don't make any on the smaller projects? And it turns out that it's really the same exact construction technology. Actually, I use the same set of subcontractors, same concrete, same two by fours. But the issue was that construction, the way it's practiced, it is really calibrated for the high end of the market because it's very inefficient and only you can recover that inefficiency, you can afford it only in the expensive neighborhoods. In neighborhoods that purchase of the home is very emotional, it's not that, you know, it's not market driven necessarily. So I started thinking, how can we calibrate the construction for middle of the market or for lower end of the market that it's feasible to build and to sell and yet the builder could make money. So that was the impetus to, to start the company back in 2010. And then we looked at various options, we re dug into it, and we figured out the best methodology is componentization. Because the building industry, you know, has really gone on that trend. Basically the, the natural trajectory of evolution in construction has been componentization. If you look at it, we didn't have prefabricated fireplaces 30 years ago, 40 years ago. We didn't have uh, windows not too long ago or prefabricated cabinets or pre-hung doors. So construction in general loves standardization. Construction loves these prefabricated components that they can pick up and just install. However, most of the components developed in construction industry they are what we call, uh, you know, they're generic components, they're adaptive components. So they can fit many products in many markets. You don't get that much efficiency out of a component if it's adaptive. But once you make that component, you know, sort of specific or, you know, integrated, then you get efficiency out of it. That's why cars, they use integrated components. So, you know, certain car components from one manufacturer wouldn't fit the other. So right. that so, was the basis. So, so we see um, different versions of this componentization uh, pretty regularly in prefab, right? We see some people who just make the shells, some people who are like prefabricating kits. What are the parts that are sort of integral to you um, componentizing or, um, or sort of systematizing before you get to site? Uh, well, we look at design all the way to delivery, all the way to post occupancy. We see that as one big continuum. So we, we do the design is really we design algorithmi algorithmically with the same components that we built. We don't design intuitively. So we have our own way of designing which uses the same components that we send to the site. And it starts with that, and then it goes all the way to post occupancy and delivery system and manufacturing. So there's a technology that runs through the whole entire process. That's why we call it fully integrated. So our delivery method is really completely useless for a typical construction because we categorize components and the construction process completely different than standard CSI you know, 16, 20 division system that, you know, everyone uses. So we have our own way of categorizing construction. 
as far as our components goes, our door jams are completely useful for somebody else. It's really meant to work with our framing system. Our framing is completely useless for somebody else because it's meant to work with our foundation system. Our rebars are completely useless for somebody else because it's meant to work with our foundation system. All the way to the cladding system that we use, all the way to the infrastructure, and you know the way we take care of post-occupancy. So when we say it's fully integrated, and we call our technology integrated component-based uh, construction technology, is because we integrate the entire process, all aspects of it, into one big continuum, basically. So I was just going to say that the one thing that Frank's touching on there is we're not a set of floor plans or kits that you call up and order, I want plan C4, whatever it is, right? When you come to us, uh, you're going to basically present your site and your wish list, what you're looking to build, and then we can do a completely original floor plan for that site. Um, so that's one of the differences that we're, the whole process from design to post occupancy is integrated. Um, as far as physical components, we're sending foundational elements, framing elements, infrastructure, exterior cladding. We allow the interior to be very flexible, so we're not limiting you to an interior package in any way. You're going to design that to your heart's content. Got it. Why don't we, um, so this is really interesting, and it's cool that, uh, as I said, we see all different forms of this, um, and it sounds like particularly in a light area like LA with very varied terrain, um, you know, it sounds like you guys have a lot of flexibility within your system. Let's, uh, and you just tell me next slide, maybe we can start to run through the process um, of building with Proto Homes and then I can sort of follow up with some questions if that sounds okay. Everyone can see my that screen. Sounds, yeah, I was gonna say the only problem is this is not gonna show the animation. There is an animation on one slide. It's, it's we can either run through it with this or I can try to pull it up on my end, but. Let's 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 see how it goes. Um, what, what's okay? The so this first slide is kind of we've already touched on. This is our building technology and where we kind of fit between traditional stick built, meaning a custom home builder measuring, cutting on site, figuring out things as you go. And on the right you have what we call volumetric uh, modular, which would be sort of your shipping container size units. You know, 90% finish at a factory. The only thing you're doing on site is putting a foundation in, and those factory made components are being dropped in. So traditional gives you total flexibility. Generally, people will complain about a lack of predictability, right? There's going to be change orders. You're kind of figuring things out as you go. You're wasting a lot of lumber because you're miscutting things. You're making errors on site. Um, but you have total flexibility. What you get with, with modular approaches is sort of the other end of this. You get total predictability where they'll say, yeah, we're going to build these floor plans in this many months and we'll deliver on this date. But you're probably selecting from a limited number of floor plans and you don't have total flexibility. They may say, here's our standard interior package or our luxury interior package or something like that. So kind of two ends of the spectrum. And when the team was looking at where can Proto fit in, what's the benefit of going with a, com a componentized approach, is that you can have the flexibility of traditional construction with the predictability of a factory controlled environment like modular. So this animation that we can't play in the center, what this is, is available on our website, which is just protohomes.com is this is going to show you a sequence of components going to the site, right? Just in time delivery, foundational elements. So as Frank mentioned, we're sending rebar, we're sending concrete, we're sending form works, things like that. Then we're going to send out panels for your walls. The structure of the home and framing, instead of being raw lumber, is going out in four foot panels that create the structure. Then you're going to see the module for your infrastructure, electrical, plumbing, everything like that go out, dropped into place. Uh, and then we're going to wrap that building and we're going to put a cladding on the outside, exterior lighting, everything like that. On the inside, it's what we call studs and rough ends at that point. So it's able to be finished out, again, however you want as far as fixtures, finishes, appliances, and items like that. So again, flexibility of traditional with the predictability of modular. The other benefit of our system with components is we go through the same permitting inspections uh, as a traditionally built home. When you go to sell a proto home, there's nothing on it. There's no sticker saying it's prefab. As far as financing is concerned, title is concerned, insurance is concerned, it's a traditionally built home. Yeah, exactly. So that's a big deal for homeowners. So cool. So, so does that mean, so two questions about that, and that's great. So does that mean that like when these get shipped, are they flat packed or are they look, do they look more like shipping containers going down? Some of them, well, some of the infrastructural items are uh, volumetric. Okay. It's like, uh, and then, uh, you know, the rest of the stuff was pretty flat. Got it. And then one other question about the financing stuff. Um, 
and you know, by the way, I was going to say not to get too dorky about this, but the goal of this, by the way, everyone is to get very dorky about this stuff. Um, so what, one of the things that we see, which is interesting, um, and by interesting, I mean, not that fun about the modular space is right. The draw schedules tend to be a bit different for modular providers. And for those who um, aren't here, it's basically because they need more money before the, uh, <laughs> before before the wood hits the soil or whatever the correct way of saying that is. Um, does that mean, uh, when you were talking about traditional financing, do you mean, does that mean that you are, are you still more like kind of a modular um, company in that respect in terms of draw schedules and stuff like that? Or would you be able to just use like a standard like Bank of America style loan? Traditional, so US Bank Department, we've done a lot of projects with traditional draw schedules. We have flexibility to, to, on how we structure it, but we follow a traditional draw schedule. So any construction loan, um, if you want to work with a different lender, we've worked with a few different lenders, but you know, if, the, if the client has a financing already lined up, just put them in touch with us and we'll explain our system, how it's treated as traditional, and we can follow that same construction draw schedule. Got it. Um, for, for everyone listening, that's actually really helpful because there's a sort of a smaller subset that can do the modular draw schedule. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, do you want me to keep going here or? Uh, yeah, jump in the next slide. So I thought we'd just sort of walk through the general process focused on one specific project that's been completed. So this is going to be what we call Proto Albert, which is a project in Redondo Beach. Um, and I'll sort of talk about this project specifically, but it's going to be how you work with Proto homes in general. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. The next slide I sort of touched on in uh, when I was speaking earlier, but you get started with Proto, the way you get started, we call it a Proto Pass, which is sort of the initial design phase. Uh, you come to us with a site and you come to us with a wish list. So this image here just kind of shows, you know, we do some zoning research on setbacks and buildable area. And then we'd have you complete a wish list, which is just what it sounds like. It's how many square feet, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, what kind of layout do you want? Do you want to do a home and an accessory dwelling unit? Sort of exactly what you want. On the right here is another little animation that's not playing right now, but this is going to scroll through a, a bunch of our previous floor plans. And we're actually setting this up so you can access some of this through our app um, as well. But this would cycle through dozens and dozens of floor plans. You don't have to select any of those floor plans. When we start with most clients right now, we start with a blank slate where we're really saying, what's the requirements and possibilities on the site? What are your must-haves? What do you want to build? Right? And therefore, we're finding the overlap in that and creating an original floor plan that meets those needs. If you go to the next slide, you'll see the floor plan that was created for the Albert project. So this client came to us. This is what they came up with. This is level one on the left and level two on the right, two story, a little over 3,000 square feet, not including the garage. One interesting design element is they have a detached, not quite an ADU. It doesn't have its own kitchenette, but basically suite with a bedroom and bathroom um, in the courtyard area. Uh, so this is what we come up with at the end of that proto pass, right? It's the floor plan. It's two dimensional. It's going to give you the layout, square footage. We're going to have layouts of bathrooms, half bath, three quarter. This is four bedrooms, three and a half bath. So we get that sort of mapped out, right? And the client says, I like this. I want to move forward. We then go under contract and go into what we call design development. And the way to think about that is we take it from a two dimensional element and we move it up into three dimensions and start figuring out all the details. And one of the things Proto is always trying to do is figure out things up front so there's no changes down the road. What we come up with in our design development is what our factory is going to produce. It's what the team on site is going to assemble. So we want to figure out all the details up front. That Proto Pass getting to this floor plan is about a two-week process. And then if you go to the next slide for me, Michael, the yeah. uh, design development is usually about four weeks. So awesome. what's happening in design development is we're going to three dimensions, right? We're going to figure out what's the layout, where the uh, um, core is going to be placed, and then we're going to do the exterior cladding. So this is a rendering of the home where we're showing the cladding materials in place. Client's obviously is going to pick different colors, um, and I'll show you some options at the end of this of, of what homes can look like. Do you mind if I ask a couple uh, follow-up questions on a uh, slide? Absolutely. Five, which which looks beautiful. Yep. By the way. Um, so Thank you. So a couple things that I noticed here that I have questions. One um, one of the things you see a lot with the volumetric companies, right, is you see a lot of things that are 14 and 15 feet wide. Um, this looks comparably on almost every dimension much wider than that. So does that mean that this would be a panelized plan instead of one that was volumetric modular because, right, you didn't have to ship so it? In the everything we do is the panelized approach. Okay. We really don't, the, the most module-like aspect we have is our infrastructure units, the cores. Everything else is panelized and flexible. So 
we're doing multi-unit projects where a unit is maybe only 15, 16 feet wide, and we could do a we can rotate the house and be 60 feet. It's a lot to handle it. And then on the on the garage, uh, so we we've seen some uh, panelized people who are also also say, uh, right, like let 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 this let the the local builders um, do the garage site built. Are you uh, pre-panelizing the uh, garages as well? The garage is structure is part of the home. We can do attach or detach. A lot of times for space efficiency, attach is preferred, but it's part of our scope. Got it. Cool. All right. Um, thanks for uh, hearing me on that. Uh, do you That's want me to go problem. slide seven? Well, so then this just is, oh, sorry, just to finish that slide. So we're finishing out the details and then that, oh no, sorry, slide six is you then have the permit set. So we're going to create those architectural pages, the structural engineering, your Title 24 calculations, and help put that permit set together to submit to the city. Again, goes through the same permitting as any traditional built house. Um, we expect that to be, you know, this design and development about four weeks. And then we usually expect about two to three months for permitting. It's going to go through their corrections. We'll wow. make corrections to our structure at no charge. They've all, every jurisdiction we've worked with has seen our system. We use the same technology every time, same approach each time they're familiar with it. I will say with, you know, the current coronavirus issue that timelines are maybe a little bit stretched just because it's a little bit more difficult process. But we look to move through quickly, get corrections back, and then get those final sets back to them. But so just to be clear, and by uh, our audience is doing a great job asking questions. So we'll cover a lot of your questions, everyone, towards okay. the end. Um, but, uh, so you, you guys are able to consistently do two to three month uh, time periods on permitting? This, That's awesome. This, That's true. This project was, I think, a week over three months. So that three months is pretty typical. We've come in on the low end closer to two months, and then sometimes it can be a little longer. Um, you know, again, we go through this, the, the process, but it's all standard building materials. One thing is we're process driven. We're not changing what the house is built with. We're changing how it's built. So, and not just built, but designed, submitted to permitting. Everything is a, a whole integrated process and we do it over and over. So there's, we're not trying to figure things out. We're just applying our system to your design and, and your site. Right. Um, cool. And so that, that's really um, great, um, honestly, because <laughs> we've experienced some projects that have gone that well and most uh, that I've seen take a lot longer, which is great that you guys have this sort of more down to a science. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of the permitting, are so are are you actually managing and taking care of that process with the local jurisdiction, or who is who's managing that in these situations? So, so we cover projects throughout the state of California. In the Los Angeles area, we can provide more assistance and work with the client on the building and safety permit for homes or you know a home in an ADU. For bigger projects, where there's a little more complexity, we have outside architect partners that we'll bring in to work with us. Um, and obviously, once you're outside of the Los Angeles area, we don't consider ourselves experts. We've built in San Francisco and Santa Rosa, but when we're in a jurisdiction where we don't have, you know, dozens of projects completed, we'd always bring in an outside architect to assist with permitting. Um, the only other scenario where we bring in an outside in Los Angeles is if you're in Coastal Commission or Historical Preservation Overlay Zone, HPOZ, then that's going to be a little bit of extra work and we'll typically bring in an outside partner. And anything that doesn't sort of fall under our umbrella, we always are, you know, we have a pretty solid network in our um, ecosystem that we can reach out to and, and help get over hurdles. And are, are you guys technically uh, California architects or are you, or, or do you have, uh, or do you just work with outside ones? California architects, yes. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, I know that you're able to get to permit stuff through just being California engineers, but uh, <laughs> in some of the tonier areas that we've done projects in, we've seen, you know, they require architects to stamp stuff and stuff like that. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep moving. So this, this next slide, this is giving you a little bit about what components are provided. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a partner contractor working on the project, whether you're within Los Angeles or you're up north out of our sort of backyard, that's going to go in and prepare the site. So demolition of an existing home, grading, excavating, preparing for our components to be delivered. Uh, once those are delivered, the first thing that's going to go out are the foundational elements. Our standard foundation is slab on grade. We're going to send those materials out to the site. And what you have there in the first picture on the left is a foundation being put into place where it's laying out uh, the layout of the home as well as the sill plates. We're then going to send out panels uh, for the structure of the home. So this shows you some, some uh, panels stacked and ready to go out on a truck. So we're flat shipping, as you mentioned, Michael. Uh, everything's numbered, labeled. Our app has the instruction set built into it, uh, which I'll touch on in a moment. 
Uh, everything is, you know, sort of dummy proof and connected. This image of a, of a core, so this is a proto core in the sky there. This is one of the few elements that, at least in the past, you need a little bit more equipment to put into place. These are large two story infrastructural units that have your utility connections, again, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, all the systems of the home, water heater, everything like that, in one location, right? So that streamlines the process of building the home and that we can drop that in, do a lot of that skilled labor electrical plumbing at our factory rather than on site trying to coordinate things. We finish it in the factory, send it out, and make the connections on site. From a homeowner or landlord perspective, it makes maintenance easier. It has an external door so you can access it without going through the tenant space get to your water heater, get to your electrical panel, items like that. Uh, we also keep most of the infrastructure and utility connections above the foundation, minimizing what we're running through that slab on grade so that if a pipe breaks, it's easier to address than having to dig up your foundation. And then on the right, you have an image of what I mentioned earlier, sort of studs and roughens, the unfinished interior. Uh, and at that phase, we'd move to the outside, which I'll talk about in a moment, and then your partner general contractor would come in and start working on the uh, interior. And so I think the next slide is, if you jump to it, Michael, is a little some snippets of the Proto Homes app um, right there, slide eight. So the Proto Homes app, as we mentioned, this is something that you get involved with from the beginning of the process, both as a builder, developer, or the homeowner. So these are some shots of what kind of information you have. You have access to 3D models of the home, and that model you can drill down to every individual component. Uh, builders have the ability to schedule deliveries. You have a help desk, so either as a builder or as a homeowner later in the post occupancy, you have access to all these permit documents, all the steps that went through to assemble your home, and you can shoot Proto a message and say, hey, I have an issue with this, or you're the builder, I am a little confused on what unit this is. But as I mentioned, you saw numbers on all the components, they also have QR codes. So the app has a built-in scanner where a builder can basically just scan a package that was delivered to them and it'll list what items are in the package, where that goes, what phase of the project that's required in. So this is kind of like a project manager in your pocket. You have access to all the information for the home and the homeowner can watch as the process goes along as photos are taken and notes are put in um, and builders can contact us and have you know, all the access. The scenario that comes up a lot is an inspector shows up and you realize you left the permit documents, which you're supposed to require to have on site, you left those at home or you left them at another site. No problem, pull up the phone, pull it up on the iPad, show them the permit documents. If he says, I need a copy, you can email it as a PDF. So this is more, again, more than just physical components. You can't think of it just as physical components. You have to think about it as an integrated technology. Again, ICDC, integrated component-based construction from the beginning of the process to a blank, empty lot to a finished home. Great. Then, sorry, do you have a question or? No, <laughs> keep, keep moving. Okay. okay. So then this next image, you can go to the next slide. Yeah. So then part of that app is being used to coordinate um, phases of the project. And this is a key phase. This is us going to the exterior cladding. So I showed you a picture of Albert at the beginning. These are more shots of the Albert project from the outside. We use three cladding materials. Our primary materials, the PVC, which you hear, see is, here is white. We use sort of the, the gray flat, which we call accent cladding, which is typically aluminum, and you use a corrugated steel. So these are all multi-decade warranty items, easily replaced if they're damaged. They're basically a rain screen, so creating a gap between that cladding and the Tyvek wrap that we protect the home with as far as weatherproofing and waterproofing, uh, moisture barrier. Uh, very long-lived, easy maintenance. Nothing here needs to be painted. It comes the colors you select, and you're basically just you know, power washing to rinse it off. So form and function, quick process to assemble, but also long-lived quality. On the inside, as I mentioned, that contractor partner, while we're work, our team's working on the outside, or the, your uh, cladding crews work on the outside, comes back and does the interior. So the next slide shows some of the interior. Again, a, you know, it's a platform for personalization. You're not limited at all on what you do on the interior finishes of this home. It's studs and rough ends. You're gonna give us the details of what you want, so we make sure there's enough wiring and J-boxes and everything, all the connection points are where they need to be, but how you finish it out is completely up to you. It's not selecting an interior package. And are, are you prefabricating? Uh, so these, these are shots of the actual Albert project. I'm sorry? Are you prefabricating any of this um, off-site, um, or is this all done on-site, the interior? The though? interior is primarily done as a standard finish, right? So any general contractor or contractor would come in, you say it's studs and rough ends, you're going to do insulation, drywall, yep. fixtures and appliances, just like they would in any other home. We do include some of the items, so we include um, an LED low voltage wiring um, lighting system for recessed lighting pancake lights, so they're really easy to place in different locations, that's included. But for the most part, the interior is left up to the client. Okay, so, so that means like, um, so there's 
in the chat, there's about 37 questions about price, but that means um, this part is like probably going to be priced similar to a uh, like a standard site built home. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Your site work and your interior finishes are no different than a, a traditionally built project, really. Okay. Yeah, and the cost range for the finishes is somewhere between 35 to about $60 per square foot, depending on the type of finishes and the, you know, the quality. But that's pretty much the range for inside finishes. That's insulation, drywall, hardwood floor, paint, kitchen cabinets, you know, appliances. So then I'll jump back to Albert, but just before, I just want to show the next slide has a, some different looks for the home. So all the homes we do are a modern aesthetic, modern home built in a modern way, but we do have different looks. So this slide shows some other completed projects just to give you an idea of different looks you can do with the cladding. It's always going to be a flat roof. It's always going to be those right angles. Everything's done for a purpose. I could get into this whole spiel about our, our roof and the waterproofing we used and how it's ready for solar and everything like that. But I won't get into it. I just want to share that there is diversity of options in the approach you take, right? And you can select different colors. Some of us are saying I want different layouts. Again, original plan for your site. And then the next slide, again, all we're doing is kind of creating that canvas for the interior. These are all different project interiors. So you have a lot of options on how you go. You'll see one of the things that comes up in a lot of our projects are these double height spaces, what we uh, will call hyperspace. So that's kind of like a, a balloon or hybrid balloon framing where you have big entryways or common living spaces with double height ceilings. Uh, and, and, and you'll listen a lot of light to these double height windows. So total flexibility on the interior. Now I'm showing you Albert, but I wanted to let people know that there's a lot of options in which direction you can take uh, the interior finish as well as the aesthetic uh, on the outside. And I'll touch, since you said there's 37 questions on pricing, I will just follow up on my, my last slide, I think, here. My second to last is just another shot of the Albert project. So this project was completed. Uh, the price per square foot, including all the nuts and bolts, financing, his site work. And I will tell you that this project ran into a little bit of difficulty because it's hard to make out from this shot, but there's some slopes to this site. So you can actually kind of see the driveway has some slopes, ended up having a retaining wall in the back. So prepping the site became a little bit more complex than maybe what we would advise a standard client. But they built for under a total of under $300 per square foot, right? So our components typically, an assembly of our components in Los Angeles area, as a, as a comparison, are usually about $170 per square foot. So that's design services, that's in, I mean, architectural pages, structural engineering, Title 24, that's components on the site, and that's assembled on site for our phase, foundation, framing, infrastructure, cladding. Right, so and we so would usually to, sorry. So you're saying they were able to do the foundation and finish the home for 130 bucks a square foot? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so 170 for our scope, and then doing the site work and the interior finishes is about another 130 to end up around 300 dollars per square foot. This came in, I think, around 275 um, on on a per square foot basis. But it, we would usually give the guidance around $300 a square foot. And how that breaks out does shift a little if you're, say, up in the Bay Area where we've done projects up there. Primarily, we're still doing the design services, but we're also going to work with a local contractor for assembly and um, completing the project out. So site, was, assembly of our components, LA? and here it finishes. Where was this? This is in Redondo Beach. So this house actually sold end of last year for $1.85 million. And again, if you looked at the listing, there was nothing it, it talked about Proto and said it has this awesome infrastructure core and it's a greenhouse and it's ready for this and that, but it didn't say prefab because as far as permitting, inspections, financing, title are concerned, it's a traditionally built home. Got it. So it comped comparable to new construction or whatever. Um, exactly. Like exactly. Well, by the way, get, for, for perspective, uh, $300 a square foot uh, is definitely on the... Uh, incredibly competitive side of what we see for most sort of uh, middle to high end builders um, in, in your area of the world. So that's very good. Um, just, uh, I, I'm sure there's more to talk about. There's uh, a lot of questions from our very engaged audience. So I'm gonna throw okay. a couple, I'm gonna throw a couple at you. Um, everyone, uh, if we don't get to your question, just because uh, uh, we have Toby coming up next, uh, I have a feeling that if you're pretty interested in this, you can certainly um, email the people from Proto, and I'm sure they'll be happy to uh, get back to you or or send us an email at a prefab review, and you know we can we can try to be helpful as well. Um, all right, so I'm I'm just looking at a couple of these. So we we talked a little bit about uh, costs already. Um, it sounds like you think like typically um, 170 ish for 
your design and fabrication and on-site install and like what would you say 130 ish for uh which yeah. again is really really good um for and do you have you have a network of, of builders for uh who you work with in at least southern california already we have yeah so we have partners in los angeles area and we also have partners in the bay area um, and we're expanding that network now we have a couple in san diego that are kind of in the early stages of projects down there um so again the thing with it you know if there's general contractors uh, you know, watching today is we're standard building materials. We offer training both through the app. The app is always there in your pocket, ready to help. And we can also jump on calls or make a site visit if it came down to it to give you more guidance and make sure you're, you're um, know each step. But it's all standard building materials. The same story. General contractors, builders, developers come here skeptical, thinking we're using a 3D printer or have some sort of weird glue we're putting houses the other way. They walk the factory and they say, wait a minute, this is Simpson Strong Ties and engineered lumber and all this. The same materials you would see on a standard job site, brand name, Siemens electrical panels, North's water heaters, things like that. We're changing the process. That's what we're changing, not the, the materials that go into it so much. Got it. Um, and then um, in terms of uh, how you uh, price the homes, uh, are you provide like when someone goes under contract with you, are you providing a price for the whole project or is it sort of for the stuff that you're doing and then someone it, has to it, go? It would, it would be a... Sorry, it would be on our scope. So what happens is that proto pass that comes up with the two dimensional floor plan, that's gonna set the contract price, right? Because that's gonna determine how many square feet it is, if they're doing any real big modifications or special requirements they have. And then that allows us to come up with a contract price. That contract price would just be for our scope. We're not a site general contractor. We're not gonna be the interior. So generally, when we come up with that floor plan, then we can take the client to take that floor plan to the contractors and say, please give me a bid on this, it's at this site, and they can go visit the site and figure out those two other big components, the site costs and the interior finishes. Um, how, uh, looks like we have a few people who are interested in building outside of the Bay Area or LA. So basically, how far do, does your geography uh, stretch in terms of places you either have or are willing to do projects? We have built in Los Angeles, the whole metro area, Burbank, Pasadena, down to Beach City, South Bay. Um, we've done San Francisco, proper city of San Francisco, right? And Santa Rosa, so wine country. Yep. Um, we have, what's that? Yeah, and we have, so that's, we, we're willing to cover the whole state of California. Uh -huh. um, in the Los Angeles area, usually we can include shipping. They're, you know, for shipping way up somewhere remote, we can do it. Um, but that is going to be, you know, an additional cost we have to look at. We can, we have very good access, so we don't, or I should say we don't need, uh, you know, special access requirements. Sometimes other prefab spaces will say, well, if there's power lines, or if it's a windy day, or if it's a windy road, we can't get to it. Generally, given the nature of our componentized system, we can get it there. Um, but in the past, it's mainly been the Bay Area and the Los Angeles area. Got it. So two questions about that. In, uh, I mean, <laughs> site feasibility is something we get asked questions about a lot. Um, so do you still need to get a crane to the sites to install or are there alternative methods for doing that? Um, and yeah, what do you, what do you evaluate um, in terms of someone saying, I own a piece of land or I'm thinking about owning a piece of land? What are, what's the sort of quick checklist for site feasibility? The first thing we usually tell people is that it should be pretty flat. Uh, we get a lot of people looking to do hillsides. Uh, yeah. You see hillside land for sale cheap. Right. And the issue is that the cost is hidden. The, to get that to be a buildable site is going to take some work. So again, our standard foundation is slab on grade. We can work with other foundation types. Because, again, yep. We're doing projects, larger projects or podium. But generally a flat site uh, is the best starting point. They probably already had a home on it um, or has a home on it. You can demolish. Then you have maybe a better indication. Utilities are in place and it's a buildable site. Other than that, we have a lot of flexibility. So an oddly shaped lot or maybe a lot on the smaller side. You know, there's going to be zoning issues to get through, but our system could be adapted to it. Um, got it. That's awesome. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's been awesome learning a bit about Proto. Um, and uh, yeah, this has been great. And hopefully uh, we'll uh, have a chance to learn more. Um, with that being said, um, I'm going to quickly... Uh, uh, switch over to uh, speaking, um, to giving Toby the mic. Um, thanks again, it was amazing learning about this. Everyone else, uh, stay tuned for a second and we'll, uh, we'll get to presentation number two, thanks. Thank you, Thank you. fantastic.